I've never seen it this bad. You know, we live in a world where everyone is looking for something to blame. If there's a problem, it has to be somebody else's fault, or it has to be the faulty equipment, or it has to be something other than my fault. That's the world we live in right now. Somebody is to blame for this. It's not me. It's got to be something else. If my aquarium looks like trash like this does, with fish poop all over the place, the water's brown, there's algae everywhere, it's got to be because the tank just isn't, it's just not right. It's, it needs a bigger filter. It needs more water movement. It needs this or it needs that. There's got to be something to blame. Yeah, there is something to blame. And it's right here. And in your tank, it might be who you see in the mirror that's to blame for it being this way. This is embarrassing. I'm humiliated. This is what I do for a living. And I've allowed my aquarium to get this way. Hey, listen, I could make all the excuses. I could tell you that I'm overwhelmed with my work. I, I'm so consumed by all these things. I, 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 all I'd be doing is making excuses. The excuses stop today. I'm gonna clean this tank right now. And when I'm done with that, I'm gonna clean the two behind it. They're not as bad off, but this one right here, this is my prized possession. And I've allowed it to get like this. You understand how embarrassed I am right now? I'm showing this to you because I'm not playing around anymore. This is a no nonsense kind of a thing. If I'm doing something wrong, I've got to show you. I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing wrong by the tank, I'm doing wrong by the fish, and I'm doing wrong by you. Today, I fixed that. All right, this video is not really a how to do a water change video. They're trying to make a point in this video rather than teach you how to do a water change. But if you're here to learn how to do a water change, I'll put a card up in the corner there that you can click on that'll take you to several videos that I've done on how to do a proper water change in aquariums, all different sizes, nanos, large tanks, all of that. Give those a watch and it'll get you up to speed on how to do a water change. But in this, I, I did want to just kind of go through my procedure real quick to talk about how I do water changes in my big tanks. And then we will get to the real meaning behind this video. So it all starts out with the removal of water and it needs to be done fast because these are big tanks. My big one here is 360 gallons. The other two are 240 gallons each. So to have a little siphon removing water out would just take all day to do that. So I remove water two ways. One is with the CJ Ultra Zero pump, which is an amazing product. I'm considering picking it up to carry it on my website. It's an amazing product to move a lot of water very fast. Hook it up to a garden hose, run that hose outside, put it in your flower bed or put it wherever you want to put it and plug it in and it just moves water fast. I don't know exactly how many gallons per hour it does, but it moves water fast and that's what we all want. The second way I do it is with my large python siphon here into a big brute trash can that's on wheels. This is to get in there and remove all of the debris and everything else that's on the bottom of all of the tanks. That's removing all of the fish poop and just all of the gnarliness that's on the bottom there. So using both of these methods to remove water, the trash can holds about 32 gallons or maybe 34, I don't know. And then the CJ pump will pump out however much I want, usually makes it pretty quick. I've never timed it, but to remove half of the water from this tank, pretty fast. So that's the way I like to do it. Two different ways. One to remove all of the debris and the other is just simply to remove water. Next, I turn my attention to my sump filtration system. And this system is actually set up similar to a canister filter in that it has five or six, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever even counted, small trays. And those trays hold sponges as well as biomedia in there. Uh, so I put those down into a tub, squeeze it all out. That tub is actually full of aquarium water that I siphoned in to that. And I just rinse it all out real good and then put each individual one back in. It's simple maintenance. 
get your hands dirty and get your hands all full of that you know what stuff but it's good to do especially in a tank like this with some heavy hitters in there that are just filling the tank full of a bunch of debris so once this is done then it's just a matter of putting everything back together again filling it all up putting some water conditioner in there my preference is fritz complete and then away we go we're all set All right, so full transparency, the footage that you just saw of me doing that water change was actually day one of this. I had to walk away from it because I had a meeting that I had to go to and so I picked this back up again the next day and basically what I did was repeated the exact same process. Now the reason why I did that is because there was so much debris on the bottom of this tank from these big dogs swimming around in here that I wasn't able to get it all up. With the sand substrate, when you go through and you're siphoning everything, everything gets mixed up and kind of floats around and you gotta wait for it to settle down again and then you can go back in and vacuum it all out again. So that's what I did the next day. Not nearly as big of a water change. I didn't use the CJ pump this time. All I did was drain some water into the brute trash cans there with uh, the big siphon. Once I got to where I felt like I got as much of the debris up as I could, then I just filled it back up again and we were done. Next, I had to turn my attention to my two 240s that both have African cichlids in them. They were not nearly as bad. I had done a maintenance on these tanks uh, between the last time I did one on the 360 and I, I hope that makes sense. So these weren't nearly as bad, but they definitely needed some work. There's a lot of fish in these tanks. Uh, we've got 60 yellow labs in one tank and then the other tank has about 24 peacocks and haps in there. So they're laying a lot of debris on that sand substrate. So I had to do the same process again. Not gonna go into details about it because it is the exact same process as the first tank. These tanks are all made by the same manufacturer. They have the same filtration system in it. So it's the identical process just over and over and over again. All right. Life is good. Life is good now for me, because I'm not ashamed of myself. Life is good for my fish, because they're no longer swimming around in their big giant toilet that hasn't been flushed. Life is better for you, because you don't have to look at that nastiness that I was showing you before. And life, yes, is even better for the cats, because now they have a nice clean aquarium to look at, or three nice aquariums to look at. Why did I do this video? Why would I put together a video, first of all, talking bad about myself, but also just doing water changes? Like how many videos have I done of doing water changes? I, I don't know, I can't even count it. So many of them. Why? Because they are part of the deal. Maintenance in an aquarium is part of the deal. And if you're up to date with your maintenance, if you don't do what I did, your tanks are gonna look fine, your fish are gonna be healthy, everything is gonna be better. Life is gonna be so much better if you just keep up with your maintenance. And I feel like there's so many of us that are looking for solutions to this problem. How can I get out of doing work? How can I make it easier for myself? Listen, folks, I'm gonna sit down for this because this is gonna go deep. Stop looking for excuses to be lazy. Period, stop that. Stop looking for the easy route. You are responsible for the lives in your aquarium. And if you don't do your job to take care of them, then I'm sorry, this is not the hobby for you. I want you to stay in this hobby. I want you to be in this forever. This is a beautiful hobby. It has completely changed my life and it's probably changed your life too. But there is no easy way. This has to be done. You have to get your arms wet. You have to get in there and get fish poop behind your nails. You have to do this work. I don't care what anybody says. There is no such thing as a maintenance-free aquarium. It doesn't exist. The big public aquariums that have multi-million dollar filtration systems in their big tanks have people on staff whose job it is to go in and clean these tanks and do maintenance on these tanks. 
I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what kind of substrate you use, what kind of filtration you use, how many plants you have in your tank, doesn't matter. You are still gonna have to get in there and do your work. And if you don't do that, and then your tanks end up looking like garbage like mine did, it's your fault. It's not your equipment's fault. It's not the plants not consuming enough nitrates. It's not, it's nothing, it's your fault. These tanks looked the way they did because of me, because I failed to keep up with my maintenance. So just remember that. This is not an easy hobby. Is it a wonderful hobby that's very therapeutic and can change people's lives like it did mine? Absolutely. But it's not a lazy man's hobby. So don't start thinking that you can. If your tanks look like trash, it's your fault. I've gotten several emails uh, for years, I've been getting this same email. Should I get a bigger filter? My tank never seems to stay clean. Should I get more of this or should I spend money on that? And the answer is maybe. I mean, listen, I could make the argument that I could add more filtration to this tank here. It has a huge sump on it. You saw it when I was cleaning it out. It's got a huge filtration system in it, but the overflows are up at the top. And so a lot of stuff stays kind of settled down at the bottom of the tank. The fish poop, the uneaten food, which <laughs> let's be honest, with three bikers, two gold, gold severums, three Oscars and two plecos in there, it's not a whole lot of uneaten food, but nastiness, garbage, stuff that looks like diarrhea floating around in the tank stays down at the bottom. So I can make the argument that adding something like a, a canister filter that has a very low input can help to sweep some of that out. Sure, it could help. It could, it could make it look a little bit better, but I want you to think about something here, okay? For everybody that says, should I get more filtration? Should I get a bigger filter? I want you to think about this. Canister filters, sumps, none of them. They don't remove the things that are making your aquarium dirty. What I mean is, if your filter is collecting all of that uneaten food, if the filter is collecting the fish poop, Guess what? It's still there. It's just in a different place. It's not sitting on the bottom of the tank anymore. It's in the filter. It's still there, which means you still have to get in there and clean that out. You have to clean your filter out because it's doing its job. It doesn't make life easier. It doesn't make it so that you have to do less maintenance. What it does do is make it look a little better between maintenance. I hope that makes sense. And I might do that on that tank because the bikers stay down at the bottom and they're just swimming around in their own poop. And I don't know, it just feels weird. I, I, I kind of want to get that swept away. So I might work, uh, might look into a solution to sweep that poop out of there and, and put it somewhere else, but it's not going to put it out of the tank. I'm still going to have to get off of my lazy ass and do the work maintaining that filter, getting all of that poop out of the filter because it's not like it's sending it out the chimney. It's still there. I hope all of this is making sense. So all of these people that are like, maybe I need a bigger filter, maybe I need this, maybe I need that. Maybe you do, but maybe you also might need to look at your habits. You might need to look at your maintenance schedule, what you are doing. Maybe you have too many fish in there. Maybe you're feeding them too much. Maybe you're being lazy like me and not doing the work. You need to consider all options. Don't just look for the easy route. This is not an easy hobby. It's glorious, it's the best thing ever, but it's not easy. I don't care what anybody says. So do not allow yourself to feel the way I felt when these tanks looked the way they did. I felt horrible. I felt like a horrible human being. I felt, think about this, I felt the same way somebody would feel if they looked at their dog and they saw that their dog was super skinny and frail and balled up in the corner and they're like, Oh, whew, the, the dog's that way because I haven't fed that dog in a week. How terrible would you feel? Well, that's kind of how I felt here. Now, my fish are well fed. They're nice and fat, but they're swimming around in their own toilet. And that's gross. And so it is my fault and my fault only that these tanks looked the way they did. Got it? The point of the dude's story. Stop being lazy. Stop looking for the easy way out. This hobby requires work.
I hope all that makes sense. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.